Hey guys, today we're in the garage with L40, <clears throat> my KAT 240SX truck, and uh, I got something to talk about. So this is KAT, um, Mystery Miles, Mystery Motor. I put ARP head studs in it, a Tomy, 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 1.2 millimeter MLS head gasket. It looks like it's got some sort of uh, SR setup here for turbo, whatever, I have no idea. I got it exactly how it sits. Um, I put a tunable ECU in it and fixed up a lot of vacuum leaks, new wires, plugs, whatever. I mean, this wire broke, so three new ones, one old one. Had to rewire half the wiring harness because it was all garbage and didn't work. And uh, yeah, I'm done with the KAT. It is no thank you. I don't want to deal with all those problems. So I picked up an RB25 for it. It came with a whole wiring specialties harness. It came with the ECU, which is somewhere. I think it's in the car. I don't know. It is somewhere. I have it. I was in my truck still. But I got the whole RB25, the drive shaft, the transmission, the whole radiator, intercooler, the MAF, all, everything to make it plug and play. So I am going to ditch the KAT setup, swap in the RB25, and uh, be a lot cooler because of it. Again, I got to plug this freaking headlamp. It's God sent. It's amazing. So once you uh, cut all these bad boys... Make sure you get all the other ones holding all the other miscellaneous wires for the gauges and junk and vacuum lines. That should be free. You start to be able to stuff this through the firewall. Oh, maybe be easier to come around over here and just give it a good old yonk. Yeah. Don't mind the highlighter green. I got it like that. Not the first color I'd choose to paint it, but hey. I'll be right back. I need both of my hands. Once you get the ECU plug pulled through the firewall hole over there, it should look something like this. You got your dash harness plug, ECU, all kind of just on top of the motor. Next, I normally come over here down to the side and I unplug my starter signal wire, the main wire that goes to the starter, and then you got your alternator plug that charges it goes to the battery and then your little connector that's right here that i already unplugged that will carry it away next i will jump to like brake booster uh vacuum signal vacuum will just vacuum to the booster and then i start doing all the fuel lines so i'm taking all that off i should stop i should invest in a tool cart so i don't stack all my tools on the side of the car but hey yeah all right, next step, let's go. I went ahead and just pulled the entire wiring harness out of the car because it was disgusting and trash can and so fucking hacked and junk that I couldn't stand seeing it, so I ripped it out and threw it on the floor. I also took out the charge pipe, the MAF, got that other plug for the fans and whatever. Oh, that is not for the fans. It's for the high-pressure power steering connector. That adjust idle at low RPM when turning. Uh, I still need to do the starter wires and alternator wires, the vacuum to the booster, and take that off. This is annoying. I keep leaning against it. About to take that off. Um, <clears throat> most of this stuff's got to stay, but I got to clean it up. Like the wiring specialty harness plugs into these and the under dash harness. This is going to stay cool temp sensor I have it in there. I'm going to try and reuse this stuff um, because that's brand new and all these lines are new. I don't know how the fuel rail setup is going to be. Probably feed right there. I think that's return. Yeah, that's return. Um, the feed is right here. But yeah, um, 
I'm going to clean this up some more before I put it in. Like, just got some pit in here. And I think I'm going to paint the valve cover and make it look nice. Clean up the, the header over here. For the turbo man, like this stupid heat shield. I'll probably clean it up before I uh, permanently install it. But yeah, we'll get there when we get there. So here's the part I'm not going to do tonight. At this point, I would drain the coolant and oil <clears throat> and uh, do that. But I'm not going to do that tonight because I don't feel like crawling underneath the car or getting that shit all over me. So what I did is I just unhooked the fuel lines. I'm about to take... I'd also take the slave off too, which is right there, the clutch line right here. Take the slave cylinder off. I wouldn't take the line loose just so it keeps its pressure. I would just unbolt it from the motor. Um, I still gotta take off the starter and alternator. And then that'll be off. Over here, I need to unbolt or just take this power steering hose off. Just gonna leak power steering fluid everywhere. Take that off. And then take the hard line off too and tuck them over to the side because I'm going to be reusing this with the RB25. Um, after that, it's motor mounts. After you get all the cool lines and hoses disconnected, it is motor mounts, trans mount, drain the trans fluid, drive shaft, trans cross member, and then out comes the motor. K's or just that easy. I mean, literally, I could have this motor out in 45 minutes if I was in a hurry. Um, I mean, you obviously got to pull the radiator, but that's, you know, zip ties on this car because it doesn't have the correct hold downs. And then, yeah, this bad boy comes right out. It's not much, but not, not much to it. So I got the main wire off the starter and I cut the plug that goes on the starter to the body harness. So I don't have to cut the body harness so I can come over here, slip this bad boy on the starter signal wire and boom it plugs in the stock harness fancy and nice so i don't have to cut up my stock harness even more than it is cut up so yeah good we're back it's like a week later i shaved my face um picked up a new project car it came with uh, another coyote motor and transmission and everything let me show you guys that this motor and car only has a hundred thousand miles on it it was in a slight wreck, nothing too crazy, just dented the crash bar and bent the core support back right there. <clears throat> it's very clean uh, from here back. It's got the whole tan interior, which I will be selling because it's useless to me. This is gonna be a drift car. But yeah, there's a new project car. It's a 2013 S197, six speed GT. Anyway, back to this. I've made no progress. I gotta pull the exhaust and a couple other bullshit things and this motor's coming out. Let's do that right now. So a lot has happened since the last update. The KA is out. I have modified the core support so the RV will fit. It will be getting welded back in so I can retain structural rigidity. That's how you say that word, right? But it'll be going in there. I have to remove the sway bar and install the motor mounts and to do that, I have to drill a hole in the, like I was saying, I have to drill a hole there and somewhere over here so that the, uh, where'd the motor mount go? There it is. So that this hole, this bolt here, it supports the bottom side of the mount, can bolt into the chassis too. But yeah, once that's done, motor will go in. Got Max over here on the sim. So I got the first motor mount mounted. I had to drill that bottom bolt hole right here. I don't know if you can see that, but that one right there. And then that one goes in the stock location. And that is for this one, which goes into there. And it mounts it to the body. CX Racing Kit, so actually pretty nice. So yeah, RB25 is now in the car. The trans mount hit right here when I was putting it in and it finished ripping the rubber off of it. So I need a new one of those before I can mount the transmission. It is currently held up with a jack, but it's bolted in. The engine mounts 
there and right there are both bolted in. I got to tighten this, the bushing section, but the car is in. I'm going to have to put this back in and I'm going to weld it back in, but I have to notch it. I'm probably going to make it where I can undo it, add bolt section there so I can unbolt it from here and here and remove the e engine easier. So all we're 25 is in now. So we're back. Motor's in the car. Most of the stuff, everything's wired up. Um, fuel, power steering, everything's done except my battery. My battery shit the bed. I got it charging right now. Uh, let me show you guys. So everything except like charge pipe. Um, obviously I gotta, I'm gonna make the core support removable. I'm gonna make a little plate and drill holes and make it where I can bolt it on and off. So when I remove the motor, it's way easier because this thing is extremely long. I mean, I like when the core support comes out, I'm gonna have probably four or five inches between it and the core support. So I'm gonna have to customize some stuff and make it work. And also there's like barely any room back there between the firewall. But I still gotta clean up a whole bunch of wiring, make it all look nice. And charging my battery because it was dead. It cranked for like one revolution and then clicked. So hopefully it doesn't mean the starter is bad. It just means that I need uh, to charge it or and get a new battery. So we're doing that and then uh, crank it over, see if it fires. Check this out, motherfuckers. I was like, shit. Little update. I uh, had to notch the core support and I cut it out, made it removable. These are very ugly. I know. This is not made to be pretty. It's made to be functional and that bolts the core support in and makes it removable. Um, I got the top radiator, radiator hose good. I got the bottom one on. I think I'm going to replace it because it's a little soft. Um, I got to work on the hot side to the intercooler which is uh right there gotta bolt it back on there um gotta get a cap for that because i don't have one and uh yeah then i gotta do the exhaust and then i'm waiting on a few things like a slave cylinder um a power steering belt i don't have a belt yet this is why i had to notch it because you see how close it is down there to the power steering pump and the crank. <clears throat> I had to lean the radiator forward some. But, yeah. So I just got done doing a whole bunch on off camera. And uh, let me show you guys what I've been doing. So I'm pretty sure I already showed you these crappy brackets that I made to bolt the core support back to the body. Ignore that. Temporary. Gonna make it look better. I got the intercooler mounted. Got all the piping plumbed. I got uh, the temp sensor, water temp sensor back in there, bottom radiator hose on, fans on, all the fans wiring. This is stock wiring that normally is hidden underneath the core support, but I had to notch it to pull the radiator forward so that the fan would clear the power steering pump pulley and I could still have them on the inside instead of the outside because they don't fit that way. I got the exhaust all hooked up. It comes out right here, out the trunk or the bed um transmission is mounted i gotta put the fluid in it and then uh, put the shifter in but let's see if it starts and see what it sounds like i have the battery charging that's why i say see if it starts um the battery is mucho dead um but uh let's give her a crank and see if uh, it'll idle for a few seconds it, oh, this thing is so hard to get into because the it's like i don't even call this really a door bar more of like just like a lateral bar from the fucking main hoop. I don't know. Let's see if it starts. And it shut off. What the heck? It won't idle. And I don't have a throttle cable, so I can't make it stay running. Well, that's a letdown. Let's see if it'll stay running out. I'll try one more time. Yeah. Why does it only run?
run for like five seconds. Hmm. To figure it out soon. I turned the idle up. Let's see if that helps. Interesting. Uh, I will be back when I figure out what the fuck the issue is. I figured the problem out. Uh, I guess I accidentally sliced that on the return side, and that's where the regulator is, so... I also don't have vacuum to the regulator. I don't know if that's going to be the issue, but I'm going to fix that. I don't think I have any hose. Fuck. I'm going to try to fix that, and then I'll see if it makes it better. But I can manually idle it. I didn't get it on camera. Uh, I can come out here and fuck with the throttle body and get it to idle. But every time I would try to give it any throttle, it would, like, stutter. And then rev, it clean. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure it's a fuel pressure issue. I'm going to fix that and then uh, go from there. I don't have any fuel line, but I want to show you guys that it runs. Fuck yeah! That sounds fucking sick! And it dies. I don't know why it won't idle. I will figure it out. But for now... So yeah, in conclusion, uh, RB25 is in the car. I got to button it up a little bit. And uh, I'll make updates as I do. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video and got to see progress with the car. And uh, let me know if you want to see anything else or any questions about it. I'll try to answer them. Thanks for watching as always. And I'll see you in the next one.